In the countdown to his final curtain call on October 10, 2004, Ken Caminiti, a 41-year-old with a penchant for life's wild ride, made a dramatic exit from the Harris County Jail in Houston. Now, it was earlier in 2001 that Ken first stepped into the spotlight of legal scrutiny for possessing less than a gram of cocaine. But fast forward through the rest of his life and you'll find that this was no one-hit wonder. Four times he found himself in the probationary crosshairs, each occasion flashing the neon sign of a drug test gone awry. And you're left to wonder how the 1996 NL MVP became a victim of drug abuse, steroids, time in prison, and even ended up dead. His story is so wild that it ultimately blew the lid on steroid use in the MLB as a whole, and we will tell it all. Ken Caminiti, a slugger whose bat captivated the baseball world, carved out a legacy within the hallowed walls of the Astros kingdom, where he lived tales of triumph and turmoil. Over a decade, he was loyal to the Astros, etching his name into the team's history for 10 out of his 15 big league seasons. During his stay in Houston, Caminiti's story was a blend of heroics on the diamond and a charming dance off it. The Astrodome witnessed his electrifying prowess as a third baseman, igniting the cheers of fans who were as captivated by his plays as they were by the man behind the glove. Even Rob Malakote, a former Astros pitcher and a comrade in the trenches of both minor and major league battles, once painted a vivid portrait of Caminiti. He burned the candle not just on one or both ends, but both ends and in the middle, Rob remarked, capturing the relentless intensity that defined Caminiti's life, whether it was with the crack of the bat echoing through the stadium or the intricacies of his existence beyond the outfield. Bypassing the AAA pit stop, Ken Caminiti burst onto the major league scene when he made his debut with the Houston Astros on July 16, 1987 at the ripe age of 24. Now, picture this major league rookie debut. Two for three, including a home run, a triple, and the cherry on top, which involves scoring the game-winning run. Clearly, the Astros brass liked what they saw, and they promptly handed him a starting role in 51 out of the final 75 games at third base. Fast forward to 1988, where Denny Walling, the man Caminiti had nudged aside in the previous season, reclaimed the throne as the Astros' starting third baseman. Our rookie luminary found himself in the minors, strutting his stuff with the AAA Tucson Toros of the Pacific Coast League. Well, fate flirted with a twist in mid-June when an injury benched Walling, but instead of summoning Caminiti, the Astros played a wild card, trading for the seasoned veteran Buddy Bell. But then late July brought more injuries, prompting a position shuffle that finally caught called Caminiti up to the big leagues. However, the fairy tale turned into a batting nightmare, and he was demoted again, only making a comeback for the September call-ups and finishing the season with a lowly 181 batting average. In 1989, Astros manager Art Howe declared Caminiti the starting third baseman, kicking off a tumultuous yet impactful tenure. And despite wrestling with injuries, Caminiti became the mainstay at third base for the next six seasons, averaging 263 with a dozen homers and 69 RBIs from 1989 to 1994. In this era, he formed a formidable alliance with Astros legend Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio, alongside Steve Finley and Luis Gonzalez, solidifying Houston's offensive juggernaut. Caminiti's career came to a high point with the Astros in the strike-shortened 1994 season. That season, he not only set a career high with 18 home runs, but also snagged his first All-Star game ticket. However, after the season finale, the Astros, looking to trim both their roster and payroll, sent Caminiti packing to the San Diego Padres in a whopping 12-player trade. It was definitely a headline-grabbing spectacle not seen since 1957. In the golden sunshine of San Diego, Caminiti's star soared even higher. He snagged three Gold Glove awards and, in 1996, was crowned the National League's MVP. His prowess continued to shine, culminating in three All-Star Game appearances and cementing his status as the Padres' all-time leader in slugging percentage and OPS. Fast forward to the post-1998 season, and the Padres bid farewell to Caminiti in a cost-cutting maneuver, paving the way for his return to Houston on a $9.5 million contract. This period, Astros GM Jerry Hunsicker hailed him as the ultimate gamer, and though injuries played the role of a spoiler, Caminiti's resilience endured. His stint in Houston from 1999 to 2000 saw flashes of brilliance, most notably in the 1999 National League Division Series against Atlanta, where he excelled at the plate batting 471 with a trio of home runs. As the millennium turned, Caminiti embarked on a journey with the Texas Rangers in 2001, only to part ways after hitting 232 in the initial months. Then, a brief hiatus preceded his signing with the Atlanta Braves, a team that envisioned him as a power-hitting first baseman. 
Unfortunately, though, it was the final notes of Caminiti's illustrious career that played out in Atlanta, concluding with a .222 batting average and six home runs. If you followed this man's story, you'd agree that Ken Caminiti's life unfolded as a turbulent saga, a roller coaster ride through the pitfalls of substance abuse that gripped him from an early age. The roots of all these struggles trace back to the shadowy corners of his youth, where alcohol became a close companion in middle school and marijuana clouded his high school days. Cocaine would enter the stage a bit later, but by 1990, crack cocaine emerged as his primary demon. In 1994, a moment of clarity pushed Caminiti to confront his battle with alcoholism, leading him to the doors of a rehabilitation center. Yet the clutches of addiction continued to tighten, and in 2000, he found himself in the halls of a substance abuse rehab once again. Then, just a year after retirement, the skeletons in this exceptional player's closet rattled the whole of the baseball world when he featured in a revealing Sports Illustrated cover story and confessed that he had used steroids during his 1996 MVP season and the subsequent years. But there was more to come, seeing that cocaine, too, held a vice-like grip on Caminiti. It so happened that a 2001 arrest for possession marked a dark chapter for the troubled athlete, leading to a probation. By 2003, he found himself in the crosshairs again, testing positive for cocaine while already on probation. And the storm of revelations didn't stop there, because a 2007 Mitchell report thrust Caminiti into the spotlight again, chronicling his admission as part of a broader investigation into steroid and human growth hormone HGH use in Major League Baseball. As a 409-page expose, this report delved into the history of illegal performance-enhancing substances in the league and exposed the truth about some of the baseball heroes we once held dear, including Caminiti himself. Behind the scenes, Caminiti grappled with not just the demons of substance abuse, but also the haunting echoes of childhood trauma. Luckily, the MLB's Employment Assistant Program provided a lifeline here, offering mental health therapy to confront the scars of the sexual abuse he suffered in middle school. Sadly, though, this did didn't yield much positive results, as substance abuse would soon become like a desperate attempt to silence the demons which haunted this player's every step. On October 5, 2004, the straw that broke the camel's back unfolded in a Houston court. It was a desperate admission to yet another violation of probation and a positive cocaine test. This marked the fourth such transgression, earning him a 180-day jail sentence. And indeed, this contributed to casting more dark shadows over his already troubled legacy. The final act of Ken Caminiti's tumultuous life unfolded on the fateful afternoon of October 10, 2004, in the heart of the Bronx, New York City. He had gone to visit a friend and, having retreated to the bathroom, sought solace in a speedball concoction of cocaine and heroin. As the substance hit, Caminiti collapsed onto the unforgiving floor, and what followed was a tragic cardiac arrest which marked the beginning of the end. Sadly, the unfolding tragedy tragedy reached its peak when at 6.45 p.m., Caminetti drew his final breath within the walls of Lincoln Hospital. Initial whispers suggested a heart attack as the cause of his death. However, autopsy results would soon reveal a merciless truth. It read something like, acute intoxication due to the combined effects of cocaine and opiates. Obviously, the demons that haunted him throughout life had, in the end, claimed their ultimate victory. Finally, it was an end to the life of an exceptional talent which had always been marked by turbulence and tragedy.